Bam, here we are, uh, four o'clock hour, and uh, we have another uh, wrestler in our country, in our nation. As a matter of fact, he was a Ohio wrestler his whole life. He's back in Ohio now coaching. Uh, he was an Ohio State qualifier in high school. Uh, he went on to the Wheeling Jesuit program over in West Virginia, a D2 wrestling program. And uh, he was part of their uh, second place team at D2 Nationals. And then uh, the team kind of got cut. So that kind of sucked. And um, he's here to, to talk a little bit about it. Uh, but first, hey, uh, Coach Hogue, how are you, sir, man? Thank you so much for coming in. Um, I do appreciate you. I know you're coaching up in Ohio now, and I'm sure uh, what we're going through has affected you as well. And uh, what are we looking like going through the uh, the end of this now? Um, yeah, so uh, for me, it's just trying to uh, – you, you're attacking every day uh, with a plan, kind of regardless of what's going, going on around you and control what you can control. So – just trying to make the best out of uh, situations around me. A uh, good example is like, you know, coming on this show, like I thought it was cool. It's, you know, let's, let's do it. Let's get after it. And then uh, as far as like the wrestling's concerned, uh, uh, you, obviously no contact. Um, there's, there's a lot of rules, obviously wrestling, you get real close with people. So I'm um, just trying to, you know, I love the sport so much. It'll be around my whole life uh, and kind of no matter what, I just know we got to, let the time pass and kind of make sure everyone's safe. So, awesome. And now you're um, you're coaching now, right? At uh, at a local high school back at home. Um. Yeah. So this past season, I uh, helped out at uh, Pickerington Central, where where I went to high school. Um, spent some time in there, just uh, working with some of the guys. Uh, I came in a little bit later, um, because. Uh, the first half of the season, the I would say the high school season, I was I was working out with a team in Colorado, uh, Pomona High School, out in Colorado, um, until like December, and then I moved uh, back to Columbus. I was I was living in Colorado for a little bit, so I was able to uh, get involved with with that high school program out there, and they're actually some hammers. I don't know, um, I think they the one they won the Colorado State Championship this year. Um, was working out with. Uh, couple of their guys came back to here in January and worked with uh, my high school that I went to Pickerington Central up until the district tournament. Uh, we were ready to go to state and then everything happened and, you know, didn't have the state tournament this year, but you know, it is, you know, we, uh, we had our, I, I worked really closely with the 26 pounder uh, who uh, two times state qualifier. His name's Brent Branson and uh, he's, he's going to Finley next year. So, uh, it was a, a good season, um, and then hopefully, you know, we'll we'll see where I'll be at uh, next, you know, uh, next season or what even the rules are going to be next season. Just kind of playing it day by day, and and things like that. So, yeah, no, I think everybody's kind of hemming and hawing a little bit, and just kind of tippy toeing through the process and seeing what's next. And um, I agree. So, man, so you. You hit the match your whole life. Uh, you, you're wrestling your youth program out of out of Ohio, and uh, uh, you, you get to the states. You do your thing, and you end up that uh, it's time to look for a school. You pick uh, you pick Wheeling Jesuit over in uh, West Virginia, the Cardinals, and uh, you yep. decide I'm going to be a D2 wrestler. And you head out and, uh, and and you hit there, and you do your you do your four years right, or you're or you're you're coming to the end of your fourth season. You guys are are ranked one or two, I think I read, uh, and, and you end up uh, coming in second in the national tournament, uh, and, and you were uh, expected to be the top ranked team going into the next year, and then uh, and then what happened? Um, so to to really sum it up, uh, the school didn't have uh I, I'm, I'm, they didn't have the the right funding or leadership and uh it's a combination of a couple things um just kind of um leadership and administration and 
just also the school was been has had been losing money for a long time. Uh, they gave out too many scholarships overall to their student body, which meant they were bringing in no money. You know, all I think seventy five percent of their students were student athletes, and by doing that, the school ended up not being able to make money. Um, and there were just so many decisions made. I'm. Um, uh, <laughs> For example, Sean Doyle was the one who started Wheeling Jesuit Wrestling. And uh, he was like a living legend in that town and on that campus. And he's, you know, still like, you know, always he is, you know, what started Wheeling Jesuit Wrestling. And, and so we took off so hard and so fast. And we were all so motivated. Um, and then, uh, you know, he actually left after year four or something I was a sophomore and he goes and he gets like a top administrative job um within a his goal was to bring in I think 300 to 400 more students and and he did that uh he had we had like 800 students at the school the next year we had 1200 because of him and, and that's he I mean that's because he was in charge of plans for undergraduate admissions enrollment that was his job Next year, we get a new president to come in. That, uh, is he the one that brought in Coach Irwin? Yep. So, uh, you know, when Sean moved on to go work at administrations, we were all seriously so hurt. We, we love this coach so much because he he started the program and we all took a chance with him. Not And when I say we, there are there are guys that I came in year three. There were guys that came in year one um, that we call them founding fathers, you know, and we all, that's you know, we would joke and, joke around and be like, you know, oh, don't talk to Max Lacey like that. He's a, he's a founding father, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. but uh, anyways, yeah. So he made the decision when he was moving on, we were hurt, but you know, he put us with coach Irwin who ended up being in, in it was so rough at first because I think of uh, how like close our team was. We it just, in general, there were people like, Oh, I don't want this new guy. Uh, we were just getting started and we were, we were making strides because under Sean within year three, uh, we got national uh, runner up at the NCAA duels. Um, I, I think in the, my sophomore year, which would have been year four of the program. So, I mean, we were, we were taken off hard and then Sean, you know, went and took his job and he explained to us like, this is what I have to do for my family. Right. Like, okay. Hooked us up with coach Irwin and he's did a phenomenal job there as well. And uh, it was just kind of all of us coming together and, wrestling every day that made all that that work and happen so yeah, yeah so so you you got there you started doing that and then um uh you get you get to the end of the year you guys come in second and they decide uh they decide to cut the program which you just spoke about a little bit uh well you yeah. know, just, just kind of talked about uh the the steps leading up to that um mm -hmm. Did, did they tell you, did they tell you guys why? Did they tell you um, what happened? And, and how did you guys adjust? Did you guys stay? Did you guys transfer? Was Coach Irwin around to, to kind of, did he come come back and kind of stay in contact and try to help you guys move on? Yeah, so kind of the steps leading up to the, the program being um, disbanded was we come back from the national tournament. We just take second. Um, talking about what we're going to do next week. I mean, ready to go. We, we, we were, we were, sky was the limit for us next year. We wanted to win, crush the points record. We were this close to, to St. Cloud. And uh, I mean, this close to St. Cloud. And, uh, and we had five guys returning that were all Americans. I mean, two national champs, the only um, true freshman all American who took third at 125 and guys that were sophomores as all Americans. And we were just, we were ready to go 48 hours later, we get some kind of mass email, you know, from, uh, administration basically saying, um, you know, we're going to host a student body meeting and, and we have some announcements to make. And they talked about, they cut so many programs and so many teachers. Um, it, it made our guys lose, um, the ability to study what they wanted to study. Basically, the institution was failing and um, and they weren't necessarily um, providing in, providing us with what we thought we, we needed as 
you know, young adults, like, you know, the, the wrestling's good, but, you know, Erwin had just lived in, in Fort, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, you know, his whole life moved to Wheeling to come coach us. He was there for a year and they're telling him like, we might close down the school and you just, you know, you busted your, you busted your ass really hard, got national division two coach of the year. And one day, uh, during all the madness of, uh, you know, kind of, we're, we're laying off all the teachers because the school was so close knit and there were really good professors there. There was a lot of campus involvement that the wrestling team had always been a part of. That was something that, uh, Sean Doyle, you know, made sure it happened, you know, made sure it happened. So it was just like, when we heard that, that certain professors were being fired, certain majors were being dropped that affected our guys who had those majors. We're like, is, is you know, so-and-so have to transfer. So what, you know, so basically what we had to do was guys entered the transfer portal for the potential to talk to other schools. And, and Erwin was like, you know, he sat us down. I remember we were all really shook up after, you know, it's like so-and-so's major got canceled. He's a freshman. This guy got, you know, it was, it was very, very odd situation, pretty emotional situation just because we didn't know what that meant for us because we all, I mean, we had just, that's all we cared about was, improving what we were working on already yeah, and um, reading the reading the article you could see it, it said like one guy left to here one guy then left to there and one guy left to here and so yeah. not, not only was it wrestling they were they were losing they were also losing uh their lifeline to what they want to do as a future adult yeah and it was just tough like even thinking about losing any single one of our guys everyone was so bought in and that's why we had the success we had um i mean we had guys that like this program, like changed their lives and they'll always think that. And it's just tough because like, we knew that maybe this is what was happening while it was happening. And that's kind of where we're at. Um, at least for, you know, what's this, that's how it's been for the last two years, but, but things are changing and, uh, they actually uh, just hired a new coach on there. Um, and I, I hope, um, you know, if he's out there, maybe if he, he hears this or he's able to get in contact with anyone who's been involved with wheeling wrestling before, like, you know, I just hope he can get the job done, honestly, because, you know, we were, we were building on something nice. And if more guys can get in that program, um, you know, rep a singlet, I, I hope they do it like with pride because that's, you know, that's what we did, but we kind of had to hit like a reset button uh, because of kind of just the money with the school, which is something we didn't have any control over. You know, we're talking millions of millions of dollars. And if, you know, the strategy, the financial strategy was different, then we wouldn't be having this, this conversation and guys would have to leave their best friends and go wrestle at another school, which is fine, but that's not what anyone wanted to do. No one wanted to leave. There's programs where people want to leave and get out. They don't want to wrestle for that coach. I don't think that was the case at all. And that's, that's why it really sucked. I think. So they're coming on, they're coming on their second year of suspension right now. So it wasn't that they, um, they didn't have the numbers. They weren't, I, I don't know if maybe that is like technically a suspension, but they're. Well, it was to... weird what I was reading because it, 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 they said, OK, they canceled the program. Mats are being torn up. But then yeah. on another, in another yeah. paragraph, it said, well, this looks like it's a suspension for the next two years and could possibly return to wrestling. So you kind of read one. I, I don't know. It didn't make sense to me. Yeah. So, a lot of people wanted to, to comment on it. Um, but, you know, as one of the guys is a, a, a captain and leader on the team I, and, and a guy that, you know, besides all that, I, I really cared. And a lot of guys really cared. Um, and those guys are the ones that will tell you, you know, there's not really an article that, that can explain it. Um, just because of the things that were being said between administration and coaching, um, it, it was it was tough. It, it, it was like they, we came up into our wrestling room one day, at, you know, and as guys were out going to class every day, being positive influences on our small campus. We come up and we're told our wrestling mats are ripped from the wall. Um, and because they said, well, we're going to turn the, your wrestling room into a new, um, a, a new, because they, they needed their doctorate program because they wheeling is wheeling. The only economy wheeling, well, not the only, but the main economy is, is the wheeling hospital. So they're big on their, their PT programs and, and things like that. We came up to the wrestling room one day within that while all this was going on with the teachers and the athlete so, someone had ripped up our wrestling mats our wrestling room had had vandalized it basically and we said what the hell is this i remember all of our guys stormed from their dorms met there and we're all we're angry we're real freaking angry and 
you know, the security had to, had to come. Um, I, I don't know if they had to come, we weren't being violent or anything, but they were just worried because we were seriously upset with who had ever done this. And, uh, and what the reason they said they needed to see it perspective, if, if prospectively, um, you know, they could turn this in, they, they said they wanted to turn this into the main room for the physical therapy program. And we're just like, and you're not telling us this after we have funded ourselves, been the biggest influence on campus and service the city with tens of thousands, you know, 10,000. I mean, we were just, we were such a positive influence. And then we, we felt disrespected and, and slapped in the face through the whole situation. And, you know, it didn't make our guys feel secure. So guys entered the transfer portal. When they entered the transfer portal, they said, you guys have, you guys are that, that you know, the, the people working in the front office, athletic director said, you guys are unloyal. And there were no, I mean, we were upset, but, you know, to, to say those things about us really hurt us. And we, we decided like, if this school is going to support us like this, because it wasn't, you know, we didn't just get second by stumbling upon it. We were working so hard every day. First year of the program, only team doing 530 workouts on, on the field in the morning before classes by my, you know, th three years later, every single team's doing their preseason conditioning on the field, coaches yelling at them. And that, that started with us and it changed the whole culture of the school. I mean, we like everyone had t-shirts. We'd have our t-shirt sales that would go amazing. We would get, you know, a thousand people in the stands for every dual meet, these, these D2 powerhouse duels in a very short amount of time. And uh, it's sad because we could have continued that if people just would have, uh, really just paid attention or cared so uh, would you um would you consider going back there and coaching if they started a program again yeah yeah i would i would, <laughs> I would always are consider part, are being still, involved are you yeah. still a little or is the is the pain still there i mean is the pain uh, it's still fine still it's still it's still upsetting still. sorry to cut you off now no worries. Uh, i think i cut you off too i i i get these delays and i i'm totally look let me try again. Yeah. Uh, if the program, if the if the head coach called you and said, "Hey, man, we're starting a program again. Would you consider coaching? Uh, what would your response be?" I would absolutely consider it. Yeah, um, I think, I think um, a lot of things would have to like line up and be in place. But you know, I I love the sport, and I I I would hate to see what we created just like kind of be a little. I don't. Want, I I would. I would support it. I don't know about coaching. I, I've got some ideas about like where I want to be coaching the next couple of years. Um, but so I, I would have to give it time. I would support it. I would, I would love to see them succeed. I, I don't ever wish anyone in wrestling to not succeed. You know, it's, it's kind of like, if you succeed, you put in the work, like that's what you earned. So, and I, I wish that for them to do good. Um, I hope that they do good. Right. They, you know, repping the, repping the Cardinal singlet. And um, what's funny is, you know, they go up, you know, West Liberty now where coach Irwin is, is just got the number two recruiting class in the country for division two. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to deal with, with West Liberty up there. Um, with, you know, with coach Irwin and Maxwell Lacey, uh, is, uh, the head assistant there. And he, he's a Costa Rican world team member at, at 97 kilos. He was a founding father at, at Wheeling. So he, he wrestled at the world championships last year. So he's doing coaching up there and, you know, they're going to have two guys that have been national champs uh, going into their senior seasons, Connor Craig and Tyler Warner, um, along with some guys that transferred over from Wheeling. And, you know, we I would say there are guys that transferred a lot of different places. But if the culture followed anywhere, it followed into West Liberty um, and they were, a, you know, a threat last year. But the transition obviously was hard. Um, Coach Irwin's probably going to he's going to do a good job with the guys he has next year. I, I talked to him on the phone actually yesterday. Uh, just calling because an article came out about their recruiting class. Just wanted to see how, how he was doing. And uh, he's like, he's like, I'm had a good conversation. He had energy. He's just like, we're, we're ready to go every single day. We're recruiting. We're, we're uh, trying to do the best that, that we can. So confident that they'll do good. Cause I got a lot of buddies on that team. And I, well, that's I great. That. And it's great to be in touch with your old coach. And uh, there's a guy, Jacob Simpson, he keeps posting on here. Oh yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, <laughs> I'll take it. He says, Tyler Hogue, I'll take him down. Hogue can get it. <laughs> he probably will. He had a nasty season. He's pretty he, good. Yeah, he said, he said, Hogue can get it. And then he put, that <laughs> equals problems. <laughs> oh, man. How do I see the comments? Hmm. I think you got to open the video. Okay. That's funny. 
And then you just Jake. got Max Lacey. Oh, yeah. Let him know, young pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> Max Lacey is uh, Jacob's coach now. So, yeah, that was awesome. What's up, guys? <laughs> so it sounds like I don't even need to ask you this, uh, this last question because I think you answered it. Uh, I was going to ask you how you think the whole situation was handled, but I think you, I think you touched on, on it not being handled very well. Shout out to Tyler coaching is definitely in his future. Brent Branson. Uh, Brent, Brent. Uh, yeah. Brent's an awesome guy. Ohio, Ohio. His son's the one going to Finley. Oh, nice. Good. Good for him. Good luck to your son. Uh, that's awesome, man. So it, it, I think you touched on everything here. It sounds like, yeah, it, it was just a shitty situation. Yeah, but I know everyone's getting through it. We talk every day, and uh, yeah, it sucked. It it sucks, uh, but I think I think it'll I think it'll turn itself out. We're gonna be we're all so close with each other, and uh, we're gonna be going to each other's weddings, and we're gonna be we're all really good friends. So the best is yet to come for uh, for the, uh, us for us. So Shane Shane C Selen, sorry if I totally kiboshed your name. <laughs> Says Tyler Rep in Picktown. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, I was I was reading I was reading the reading the comment. What, he's, so Shane Seeland's actually sitting right next to me. Funny enough, uh, and so he's making faces at me because he commented. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, this guy, um, not guy. I think this is a girl. Marissa Marissa Lowry said. What skills do you have to have in order to start wrestling? That is a good question. Um, you just got to, I don't know, you just got to be tough. You, you just got to go in there and want to be tough and want to work hard. And you want to spend your time doing something positive and fun. Like, you need, it's just, so it's mindset. Like, it's like, you know, you obviously you got to, all the, and the rest will come. Just mindset. That's awesome. Uh, Mr. Branson said, young man should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I had a gentleman on Colton Kirsten the other day. I don't know if you saw him. He was a uh, I think he was at a, a young program where he fought he fought off bacterial meningitis to get back in. Man, the the just the stories I've heard and I've had on here. Uh, Hogue, you're the man. Keep doing well, Nolan Whitty. No, Nolan was uh, yeah, he wrestled at Wheeling. He's from Cleveland. Good guy. Derek Oney, Branson is corny. <laughs> I'm laughing. How's it going, Oni? Them. They're just all coming now. <laughs> I know. I mean, I don't know how long we can go. I'll go a little bit longer. That's I don't funny, know. Uh, shout out to my man, Hogue, Jeffrey Mike <laughs> Mucha. All right, let's, just, let's at least do the 10 questions. You ready? Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Avenue Eats or Hall of Fame Cafe? I, I think Avenue Eats, but if Hall of Fame Cafe is also TJ's, then I don't know. I might be, but Avenue Eats is really good. Nice sit down for the patio. Pizza, Pizza Villone or Patsy's? Patsy's, Patsy's. Nice. Uh, the Glass Museum or the Toy and Plastic Museum? The Toy and Plastic Museum. I've been there. It's uh, They have a bunch of trains and really old things, yeah, with like Legos it's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, uh, good to see you, Tyler. Looking forward to working with you. Brent Branson <laughs> react. Oni, fight me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, Wheeling Park or Grand View Park? Oh, uh, Wheeling Park. Uh, shout out to Wheeling Park. Got, a, got some ties there. Some good wrestlers come out of there. Hot dogs or kielbasa? Uh, probably kielbasa. <laughs> Oh, Kielbasa, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Klondike Bar or Clark Bar? Klondike Bar. Steelers or Penguins? Penguins. <laughs> uh, the Tunnel Green or Mount Wood? I don't know if I know those. Those two tunnels, I don't know, there was two tunnels. I just grabbed shit. Oh, those, yeah, so funny enough about the tunnels is they have tunnels that you – you could go explore all the time uh, and be in Wheeling and they got some old train tunnels that are abandoned and haunt, haunted. I'm not sure what they're called, but I would ride my bike through them. Uh -huh. Pierogies yeah. or dumplings? Oh, pierogies. Okay. Independence Hall 
or Cathedral of St. Joe's? Uh, Cathedral of St. Joe's. <laughs> Those are my 10. I hope I did okay. Did I bring you back to your, uh, your college town? Yeah, yeah. Wheeling is an interesting place. Uh, you could really go there. and that, that was funny you said that about the tunnels. Um, yeah, they have like a lot of a lot of weird history there that yeah, they had like this, uh, I was reading about this almost like a, this wire bridge or something that you can walk across or yeah so that's the bridge that goes across Ohio to West Virginia and it's called the covered bridge um and so if you ride across it on a bike like I, me and my buddy Keegan did or you walk across it um you know at midnight or something <laughs> you can uh you can go to the other side of the river that's cool that's like uh i was up in um, pennsylvania on the other side by philadelphia for a while and we'd go to new hope and they'd have a little bridge and you could walk right over to new jersey little town there so kind of similar You're nice nice yeah man this is awesome i think we i think we're gonna have a fight here between Derek oney and brent branson Oh my so gosh, if, yeah. If you guys want to hit the mat live on Ward Wrestling Live, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Derek Oney is actually the head coach in, in Pickerington, Ohio at Pickerington North. And then, uh, like I said, Brant's, Brant's just super involved in the wrestling community in Pickerington right now, which, you know, good guys. Good guys. <laughs> money on me. Brant's good money on me. Branson's a big guy, but but Oni knows how to wrestle. Branson was actually a basketball player, and his son got into wrestling, and now all he can talk about is wrestling in Ohio State. This and he uh, he made a he made a funny top five wrestler of all time list. Oh my god! Hey, guess who his number one wrestler of all time was? I actually I want Brent to comment it. <laughs> well, that 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 should be number one. Yeah, I had done. Um, do you know Bracken Meat? Yeah, I do know Bracken Mead. Yeah, I had him on. I uh, was it yesterday or the day before? He was talking about uh, Palmer, Palmer training. Yeah, yeah, Palmer's close around here. Yeah, <laughs> Oni says I'll destroy him. <laughs> yeah, Maybe not in basketball. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Oh, this has been great, man. Hey, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, uh, please invite anybody that you think would be good for the show to come on uh, I, i've got an open invite to anybody who wants to talk wrestling I, i've learned a lot and uh i'm that parent too i had a uh have a kid that has spent the last couple seasons wrestling and i fell in love with it and here i am you know yeah it's it's such a good sport and i i couldn't be any more thankful for it like it it, it is just been everything to me and I know when I talk to other people they feel the same um and it provides so many lessons and so many avenues for positive thinking positive lifestyle just you know and I think progressing in the right direction is something that all wrestlers want to do and if you're out here doing that you, you're usually living a pretty good life so oh Nick of my number one <laughs> He said that he 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 and he was serious, man. That's he's a, he's kind of a rook. Bo Nichols good, but he's talking number one wrestler all time, Olympic and college. <laughs> hey, thanks, Brent Branson. I appreciate you for shouting me out. Hey, thank you so much, guys, man. I love what you do for the sport. I love that you're in the sport, and uh, I love that my kid is part of this sport now. And I, I just think it's doing so much for for people and and young young kids and just creating amazing adults in our, in our country and in our world. So keep doing what you're doing and, and keep giving back to the sport that you love and uh, come on anytime. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks for having me on today. My pleasure. You take care. Hey, you as well. And feel free to share this. Absolutely. Thank you.